Thank you all very much for coming. I'm Robert Gilbert with the Vesica Institute in Asheville, North Carolina, and we're very proud to be sponsoring Dr. Ibrahim Karim from Cairo, Egypt, to be with us here. This is our public talk, uh, where Ibrahim will give a general presentation that will be dealing with both vibrational science and spiritual science topics. And then we're going to have a four-day intensive for students that are joining us of Dr. Kareem's who have come together from all over the world. We have students from six continents coming to be with him for the next four days. Before we start with Dr. Kareem, he's asked me to give a general introduction to his work. So that's where we're going to start here. With our first slide, this is our friend, Dr. Ibrahim Kareem. Dr. Kareem, as you might know, is the developer of the field of biogeometry or how geometric forms affect life functions. And to give you a sense of the work of Dr. Kareem, it's very helpful to start with the ancient Egyptian temple science. Dr. Kareem will often reference the ancient Egyptian temple science in his work. Dr. Kareem's work in biogeometry is a universal science that connects to all traditions throughout the world and is not limited to the knowledge and practices of ancient Egypt. But Dr. Kareem is an expert in the knowledge and practices of the ancient Egyptian temple science. In ancient Egypt, they understood that they were constantly interacting with conscious forces of nature, and they termed these conscious forces of nature the netters. In the hieroglyphic language, there aren't vowels, simply consonants represented. And so the consonants NTR are in the hieroglyphic text representing these conscious forces of nature that they refer to as the netters. Netter is a foundation for our modern English term, nature. And when you read these texts from the old Egyptian hieroglyphs translated into English, they will often use the term god or goddess when they are translating the term netter. But this can lose something in the translation because again, the Egyptians understood they were interacting with conscious forces of nature and they understood how to have a communication code with these conscious forces of nature. Virtually every classical tradition in the ancient world had some type of shamanic science in which they knew how to talk with forces of nature. And particularly in ancient Egypt, they had mastered these communication codes. One way that these codes manifest is in pure geometric form, that the forms themselves hold a particular type of vibrational or energetic content that connects with higher realms through resonance and harmonics. In this particular illustration that we have received from Dr. Kareem, it shows a netter interacting with the pharaoh. And the interaction between this force of nature and the pharaoh is through particular forms held in the hand. These forms have a geometric form to them, but their geometric form actually emits specific vibrational qualities. And this is one of the secrets of the ancient Egyptian temple science, that some of the forms that we see from ancient Egypt, like the form of the Ankh, is not simply a metaphor, is not simply a symbol for life, but the form itself actually emits a carrier wave, emits a vibration that has an effect on living beings. So what we see represented here is that in ancient Egypt, they knew how to communicate with the forces of nature through these communication codes, including that of geometry. And these geometric forms have a vibrational content as well as a symbolic meaning. One of Dr. Kareem's friends, when he was learning vibrational science in Egypt, was a Coptic medical doctor, Dr. Khalil Masia. And Khalil Masia did a tremendous amount of research in looking for particular types of forms from ancient Egypt that were spread throughout museums in Middle East and Europe. And the form you see here is a form known as the waj. In Europe, it's known as the Egyptian pendulum. This particular form is one that is represented in many European and Middle Eastern museum collections. And they usually simply label it as some type of ritual object but ritual object is just a description they give for something that they don't know what it is or how it was used. What it actually is, is a pendulum that has a specific type of vibrational emission from it. The vibrational emission from this pendulum comes from the hemispherical cap at the top 
and the vibration that it emits is modified by what looks like zigzag lines, similar to a specific letter in the hieroglyphic language, that changes the vibration so that the emission from the tip has a penetrating carrier wave of energy. And hundreds and hundreds, if not more, of these objects have been unearthed in archaeological digs in Egypt, which is why they're so common in so many museum collections. So in ancient Egypt, they used a science using these forms and their vibrational qualities to communicate with natural forces and to develop a science of being able to differentiate different vibrational qualities and to know their effect on living beings, both as far as energetic and health effects as well as effects on consciousness. This particular slide comes from a German woodblock print of Saint Luiger. Saint Luiger is a Catholic saint who is connected to the building of the cathedrals. And he's shown holding two forms. One is the cathedral, and the other is a staff of authority that has a very specific geometric form to it. The top of the staff has this type of spiral movement that works as a type of antenna to receive and send energy. Although it's hard to see in this woodblock print image, if you look at the staff, there are small projections at different lengths of the staff. By holding the staff at different points that are marked on it, you can use the staff as a vibratory device. And at one particular length of the staff, you can isolate a wavelength that is connected to determining a specific vibratory quality such as underground water, or the vibrational quality of what would classically be referred to as the quality of a sacred power spot, or another type of vibrational quality needed in the differentiation in finding a land location and correctly building a building that had the spiritual qualities to become a true temple or a true church. And so this knowledge from ancient Egypt actually spread in multiple directions. You can find aspects of it in the Jewish Kabbalah, in the Greek Kabbalah, and then moving into Europe with the uh, esoteric research of the Catholic Church, and then later with the Jesuit order, which particularly focused on the knowledge of ancient Egypt. In medieval times in Europe, they did types of vibrational testing to find lines of energy in the earth. And these earth grid energies were classically used for demarcating specific vibrational qualities in a location, and also they would build sacred structures directly on the earth lines. The earth lines could be used either for placing the walls of the building on or the central axis of the building. And so this woodblock print shows in medieval times the uh, dowsers of that time vibrationally testing for where the lines of energy are running in the earth to plan out the city. In Dr. Kareem's biogeometry work, a tremendous amount of detail has been developed talking about the ways that we can detect these earth energy lines and the methods used in ancient times that have now been updated into modern methods to be able to build and work with these earth energies in the classical method of either developing a single building or actually shaping the energetics of entire neighborhoods, communities, or cities. This particular slide here looks at the way that in placing any type of sacred site, which in modern times would be a church in Europe, they would find a place that multiple energy lines come together that are running a specific type of energy. Again, this is an energy often referred to as the energy of sacred power spots. And one of Dr. Kareem's accomplishments, as we'll mention in just a moment, has been to actually identify the specific vibrational quality of power spots. In this particular German analysis of this particular church, you can see that there are multiple lines of energy that are crossing at a particular location. The place of the multiple crossings of lines of energy is where they will place the altar within the church. And another major large energy line will become the central axis for the church. Moving into modern times, the knowledge of how to actually test these specific vibrational qualities and to work with them is something that classically was always kept in closed circles, always part of closed initiation traditions. But multiple spiritual traditions around the world knew about it and trained their own initiates in this type of science. It began to break the surface with some of the information about the details of how this sort of work is done around the year 1900 in France. At that time, as we mentioned before, 
the Jesuit order within the Catholic Church had been collecting esoteric information from different parts of the world. And they were well known for collecting information, particularly from ancient Egypt. There were Jesuit priests who were trained to be missionaries, and they were sent to other countries armed with these particular vibrational methods. So around this time in France, a little over 100 years ago, there began to be books written with titles like the Radiesthesia of the Missionaries. Radiesthesia is the term used in Europe for sensitivity to or the ability to detect subtle radiations. And so the Radiesthesia of the Missionaries described the way that Jesuit priests were trained to be able to detect the vibrational qualities of the places that they were sent to. Because being sent to another place where you don't speak the language, no one knows you, and to try to convert the natives, you had to have practical skills. So with this vibrational science, they could do things like find sources of drinkable water. They could test what food was edible and what was not. They could find exactly what local plants would be medicinal for specific types of illnesses or health problems. And through that means, the Jesuit priests could be of tremendous help to the local population and be accepted and integrated into the local population. With the publication of these texts about the radiesthesia of the missionaries, there were particular texts also written by Jesuit-trained French priests, such as the gentleman you see in the right-hand side of this illustration, one of the most famous of these priests, whose name was Abbé Mermet. Abbé Mermet wrote a book called Jo Père, which means How I Work. And he was very well known in Europe for being able to use vibrational methods, not only to do things like find uh, drinkable sources of water and underground minerals, but also to be able to detect the specific vibrations from any substance, find missing people, all types of things of this nature. And so it was around this time, 1900 in France, that a series of books appeared in French that described specific techniques for doing this type of work. And again, it was primarily written by Jesuit-trained French priests such as Abbé Mermet. With the work that they did, they were able to train enough people in France who were not necessarily part of the Catholic Church or part of any spiritual tradition, but simply independently began to research energies and to work with them. And this then allowed the rediscovery of some of the secret knowledge that had been embedded in some of the ancient sites of the world, particularly in Egypt, because the French researchers, which had gained thousands or tens of thousands of practitioners into radiesthesia by the 1930s, these researchers really focused primarily on ancient Egypt as a source for their knowledge, because they said that although many cultures understood this vibrational science, it was the ancient Egyptian temple science that had taken the work the furthest. And so with illustrations such as this, one of the people that pursued this work was a Russian named Kerner Skariatin, who wrote books under the name of Enel. And in this particular text, he looks at the specific rays of energy that are present in particular geometric forms. And particularly, he lived in Egypt and he tested in the Great Pyramid and found a particular ray of energy that came into the Great Pyramid, not in the center of the pyramid, but at six degrees, 15 seconds off of the center. That deflection is a particular ray of energy that was then used in the construction of the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid because the sarcophagus in the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid is at six degrees, 15 minutes off of center. So using this knowledge, they're able to directly detect the specific vibrational qualities that these buildings were constructed to amplify or to catch for specific applications. In 1933, something very important happened with this, at this point, free body of French research, now no longer associated with any specific spiritual tradition. And at that time, a particular researcher named André de Belazal along with his co-worker, Leon Chamoray, were able to isolate a specific range of vibrational qualities that became a type of vibrational spectrum. They built on the work of earlier pioneers like Louis Turin, a radio engineer in France. But this individual that you see in these pictures, de Belazal, was able to finish the spectrum. So just as we have today an electromagnetic spectrum that allows us to create electromagnetic technologies, 
So at that time, in 1933, they completed this understanding of the range of vibrational energies that are too subtle to be picked up by electromagnetic detection equipment. However, these subtle energies were known to the ancient spiritual traditions who practically applied these energies. And these particular energies do affect living beings, all biological life, in a profound manner. Although, again, simple electromagnetic detection equipment will not detect their presence. They split the spectrum up into 12 different parts. And they completed the spectrum when they identified a penetrating carrier wave of energy that they referred to under the somewhat confusing name of negative green. Without going into detail as to why they called it negative green, we'll simply say it's a very strong penetrating carrier wave that can be emitted by specific geometric forms. And this particular carrier wave of energy was found by the French researchers to be capable of penetrating thicknesses of lead that could not be penetrated by x-rays. So with the research that they did, you can see de Belazel in front of an array of hemispheres pointing in a particular direction. They could actually manifest and amplify, sometimes to a dangerous extent, this particular vibration through these types of methods. You'll also see an illustration of a hemisphere and pyramid form. They found that these forms actually emit this penetrating carrier wave from their base. And so both the dome and the pyramid have specific applications for energy purposes because they are what Dr. Kareem refers to as polarized geometric energy emitters. In other words, they send a wave of energy in a specific direction. And that wave of energy can be engineered for specific purposes. But the main thing to take away from this slide is that in 1933, they were able to complete this spectrum of all the vibrational energies that affect living beings that are not known to modern science, but that were known to the great classical traditions of the world. In fact, as you see in this particular chart by Kerner Skariatin, the Russian who lived in Egypt and used the French methods of vibrational research that they called radiesthesia, they were able to isolate with the 12 bands of energy that they detected in the spectrum exactly what types of vibrations came from what types of forms and were also present in what types of illness and disease microorganisms. This also meant that they could isolate the specific type of subtle vibration that could neutralize the energy coming from these disease microorganisms. And this is very precise type of knowledge. They may refer to these things uh, in the different vibrational qualities under the names of colors, but it's not simply a color. Color is one way that these vibrations manifest in what Dr. Kareem refers to as scales of quality. So the complete vibrational spectrum creating all the possible effects on living beings will appear in the scale of quality of color, but also in the scale of sound, also in the scale of motion and angle and shape and proportion they are all qualitative scales that create very specific energetic effects. Now, most of this French research is somewhat lost at this point. At the Vesica Institute here in Asheville, we have been working for some years to translate them into English for the first time. And we have translated over a dozen of these texts into English. And their knowledge is integrated into our biogeometry courses that we teach under the auspices of Dr. Kareem. And this brings us to Dr. Kareem's own work. And Dr. Kareem has, over the last 40 plus years, taken the French work and taken it much, much further. He's added many aspects to it and created a complete vibrational science from it that he has now standardized in the biogeometry training and that we're now able to offer as standardized foundation and advanced trainings in the work. After people complete the foundation and advanced trainings, they can then come to courses such as the one starting tomorrow where Dr. Kareem offers more advanced information. So biogeometry is the science of energy balancing. We often refer to it as nature's own design language of shape, sound, color, motion, angle, proportion, all the way that nature creates vibrational and energetic effects are things that are studied and applied in biogeometry. It's also based on the principles of resonance. And resonance is when things of a similar vibrational quality can exchange energy and information, and the principle of harmonics, where this vibrational exchange takes place at all levels, at all planes of existence, all dimensions. 
Now, one of the remarkable things inside biogeometry is that it has practical methods for us to directly detect specific vibrational qualities, differentiate them one from another, and to apply them or transform them for practical purposes. Dr. Karim has also succeeded in identifying a specific vibrational quality not discovered by the French that is the vibrational quality that balances all living energy systems. This is an energy that Dr. Karim has coined the Biogeometry 3 or the BG3 because it has three specific components, but they come as one totality. So sometimes Dr. Karim will refer to this as the one energy quality. But it's like the mystery of the Trinity, where the three is one and the one is three. But Dr. Karim's original research was able to isolate the three specific vibrations that do balance all living energy systems, the BG3. One of the most fundamental parts of biogeometry is something called the physics of quality. Dr. Karim's physics of quality is a complete conceptual foundation for a new vibrational science that is the missing part of the science that we have today in modern science and physics. Because the science we have today is purely a science of quantity and quality is not allowed. So the physics of quality describes the way that vibrational qualities work to affect all living beings and that this is the flip side of the quantity that is studied today. Virtually all classical traditions from the ancient world focused on quality and not on quantity. If we focus only on quantity, we throw out all the knowledge from thousands of years of research in China and India and other great cultures. But if we have a science that integrates quantity and quality together, then we can bring and incorporate all this classical knowledge that is our spiritual inheritance into a modern system as Dr. Karim has done. Now, Dr. Karim has a very uh, varied background. Dr. Karim's father is known in Egypt actually as the father of modern Egyptian architecture. Dr. Karim is himself an architect and received his doctorate in architecture from the prestigious ETH Institute in Zurich, Switzerland. When Dr. Karim got his doctorate in architecture, at one time he worked for the Egyptian Ministry of Architecture and he served as the consultant to do the renovations to the Museum of Ancient Egyptian Medicine run by Dr. Fauzi Solomon. And as Dr. Karim was working with Fauzi Solomon on the Museum of Ancient Egyptian Medicine, Dr. Karim learned many things from him having to do with ancient Egyptian medical practice. And he was also introduced to a whole group of esoteric and vibrational researchers in Egypt, including Dr. Khalil Masia, who we referred to earlier. Through these contacts, Dr. Karim began to learn a lot about vibrational science and also about the French radiesthesia methods from the 1930s that we mentioned previously. Dr. Karim actually uh, went at a later time to Paris, France, to the particular location, the Maison de la Radiesthese, that uh, was the collection point for all the French vibrational research. And when he arrived there, in a sense, he was recognized by the woman that ran the place, although he had never contacted them previously. And she said, you're the person who's supposed to take this work forward. And she took him down to the basement and gave him this treasure trove of original research notes, equipments, out of print books from all these researchers in trunks to take back to Cairo. And she made a very good choice because Dr. Kareem has used this and has made it the foundation that he's built the greater advancements of biogeometry on. Now, Dr. Karim is the sort of person that, although he is a Muslim living in Cairo, Egypt, he finds himself accepted by many different spiritual groups and organizations across the world because he is a person of a truly hermetic nature. He is a person that has a type of universal spirituality that is not confined to any one tradition. And so one sign of this is that in Egypt is one of the oldest, if not the oldest in the world, of Christian communities, which is the Coptic Christian Church of Egypt. And Dr. Karim was actually invited to be a member of their esoteric study circle. And he was the only Muslim ever invited to join them in this Coptic Christian study circle for their deepest esoteric mysteries. And so again, Dr. Karim has been initiated into a great deal of knowledge from many different traditions around the world. 
Now, Dr. Karim was also a founding member of a group called the Imhotep Scientific Society, which was an organization begun in the early 1970s by Yahya Kosik in Saudi Arabia as an organization to collect esoteric knowledge from around the Middle East and bring together researchers from around the Middle East to share their knowledge together. And so Dr. Karim has been involved with this research and sharing activity now for 40 years. So Dr. Karim is an expert in the specific methods used in ancient Egypt for creating specific vibrational effects. So for example, if you go to Giza Plateau, you will find that the three major pyramids at Giza are not flat-faced pyramids. The three major pyramids have a half a degree indentation straight down the center of all four faces of the pyramids. This is known to Egyptologists, but they don't understand the purpose for it. The purpose for it is that it changes dramatically the vibrational quality of the energy inside the pyramid. In ancient Egypt, they understood about finding the sacred power spot to build the pyramid on in the first place, and then how to modify the shape of the pyramid to change its energetics for the desired purpose. So the modifications to the shape of the pyramid are quite intentional and create a profound vibrational shift within the location. In our biogeometry trainings, at level two of the foundation training, we actually have people build and test model pyramids themselves so they can see the vibrational change that takes place. Now, one thing that you find with these types of esoteric mysteries and also within the training in biogeometry is that the deeper you go into it, one veil after another comes off the knowledge. And you learned about it at one particular level, but as you go deeper, you find there's a whole other level that gets revealed. And so in addition to the way that the pyramid form is a polarized geometric energy emitter that creates a penetrating carrier wave of energy, as we mentioned before, and the way that these forms have been altered in a specific way to be able to change the vibrations inside of them with the indentations on the faces, as we mentioned before, there's also a hidden part of the system that Dr. Kareem discovered where particular geometric forms will resonate with different planes of nature. Now we know that the human being contains more than a physical aspect. Along with our physical aspect, as understood by every classical tradition on the planet, we have a body of life energy that the Greeks called ether and that the Chinese called chi and the Japanese called ki and that the Indians called prana. In addition to this body of life energy, we have what's often referred to as the astral or emotional body. We have a body of mental activity and we have higher spiritual bodies as well. There is a hidden communication code of the type known and used in ancient Egypt where specific geometric forms are like antennas that connect with and resonate with different planes of nature. So that the form that you see on this particular slide is a type of pendulum developed by Dr. Karim that brings together a variety of these shapes that connect to the different planes. The shape that connects to what's often referred to as the astral plane, that is actually the source of the human emotional body, is the form of a hemisphere or a pyramid. So that these geometric forms have multiple aspects to them. And so one of those is that it connects to a very specific aspect of the subtle worlds. Normally when Dr. Kareem comes to Asheville to speak, we have him focus on vibrational science, and he'll do some of that tonight. But we've also asked him to speak tonight about some of the deeper spiritual mysteries and spiritual ramifications of this type of work. And that's why I want to give you a little foundation in this by talking about how these geometric forms also connect to these levels of spiritual reality and the different planes. When the Egyptians chose the form of the pyramid, they knew they were connecting to a particular plane of nature. And by changing the geometry through the indentation of the faces, they changed the resonance from the general astral plane to the higher astral for the spiritual activities that would take place within the structure.